the Chairman, Board of Directors of the MasterCard Foundation, MasterCard Foundation Board of Directors are here present. Experts and practitioners in financial inclusion gathered here today. Distinguished guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I want also to thank the MasterCard Foundation for choosing Kigali as the venue for this important symposium on financial inclusion. Thank you for putting together such an enriching and interactive uh, sessions that have brought together a diverse audience from more than uh, 50 countries to discuss an issue that is pertinent to all of us. Globally, financial inclusion has increasingly attracted great recognition because of its role it plays in inclusive growth and development. By and large, access to finance for any country citizens acts as a catalyst to accelerating economic growth, reducing income inequality, and reducing poverty. It gives citizens the ability to build financial security and reduce vulnerabilities or financial shocks through savings and insurance. They acquire loans and invest in productive activities and create wealth and jobs. Indeed, financial inclusion is a prerequisite for inclusive growth and development. A recent research by McKenzie Global Institute dubbed the Digital Finance for All, Powering Inclusive Growth in Emerging Economies that was released in September 2016, it showed that widespread adoption and use of digital financial uh, services could increase the GDPs of all the emerging market economies by 6%, or at least 3.7 trillion addition on the GDPs of our countries by the year 2025. This shows how financial inclusion is a $3.7 trillion, $3 trillion opportunity, though businesses have not really seized this opportunity. For instance, in Sub-Saharan Africa, only 34% of the population held bank accounts in 2014, compared to 94% in the developed world. And globally, 2 billion individuals and 200 micro, small and medium businesses in emerging economies today lack access to savings and credit. Even those with access must often pay high interest and fees for a limited range of products. The world can't accept this status quo to continue. And it is our responsibility, us who are seated in this hall, to address this issue. Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, for the Rwanda's case, the government considers financial inclusion as an enabler for achieving the country's development and poverty reduction objectives as embodied in both our Vision 2020 and the Economic Development and Poverty Reduction Strategy. With targets to achieve 80% and 100% financial inclusion by the year 2017 and 2020, respectively. Yet, according to the 2008 FinScope survey, it was revealed that only 21% of Rwanda's bankable population was accessing formal financial services, while 52% was completely financially excluded. This high level of financial exclusion was mainly linked to four um, factors. Limited access to physical access to financial institutions, financial illiteracy, limited trust in financial institutions, and low income levels. Based on the outcomes of this survey, the government elaborated and launched a national savings mobilization strategy which had among its main objectives to have at least one circle per sector. Sector is an administrative unit of our local government that would ensure that citizens have access to a financial institution 
in a distance of less than five kilometers. And by end 2009, with the support of the government, the citizens were able to establish circles within their sectors across all the 416 uh, sectors in our country. Further, with the urgent need to bridge the financial access gap, in 2012, a five-year financial sector development strategy, uh, FSDP2, was developed with financial inclusion as one of its key pillars. A national financial literacy strategy was also launched in 2012, and laws to support the financial inclusion agenda were further enacted. To assure the population of the stability of their money, the central bank increased its oversight activities over the newly formed circles by deploying 60 new inspectors across the country, at least two in every district, in each district of our country. Also since 2009, with a supportive regulatory environment, new financing, financial products that promote financial inclusion were introduced into the market, including mobile financial services by both banks and telecom companies, agent banking, shares and bonds on the capital market. This also facilitated entrance of new banks, opening new bank branches and outlets. Mutuel de Santé, a universal health insurance product that covers more than 90% of the population today is another major milestone in financial inclusion agenda. Through the digital financial services, uh, the following uh, products are issued or services are offered to our citizens. There's a transfer of money between individuals that used to take days, today it takes uh, just seconds or minutes. They're paying pensioners online, electronic disbursements of fertilizer subsidies to the citizens. Refugees are receiving food and digitized receiving food aid through digitized cash disbursements, utility bills, electricity, water, and others are paid electronically. Fuel and other products are now able to be bought electronically. Bank accounts to e-money, account transfers, and vice versa. And then savings and micro loans are able to extend it to the poor part of our population. The government of Rwanda has also taken further steps to enhance operational efficiency and the quality of service to the citizens and the business through the Rwanda online platform that exclusively offers government to business and government to citizen services online and all the payments are done online using mobile money. Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, to effectively monitor the financial inclusion progress. Rwanda resolved to be carrying out financial inclusion surveys, commonly known as FINSCOP, every four years. And results from these surveys have been very helpful in informing the country's policy orientation. We have so far conducted three surveys, that was 2008, 2012, and 2016. Four years after the first FINSCOP survey, uh, of 08, and three years after the creation of the Omrenje Circle, findings from the 2012 FinScop survey revealed good increase in financial inclusion. From 21% of adults that were formerly served in 2008, to 42% uh, served in 2012. The percentage of Rwandan adults that were totally financially excluded reduced from 52% to 28% over the same period. The bank population also increased from 14% to 23%. The recent FinScope survey of 2016 revealed further achievements that were made between 12 and 16. Access to formal financial services had increased from 42 to 68% by the beginning of this year while overall financial inclusion increased from 72% to 89%. So if you compare 2008 and 2016, the total excluded reduced from 52% to 11%. These good results in financial inclusion 
can be linked to achievements happening in mobile financial services and Murenje Sako. For example, FinScope 2016 revealed that 33% of adults use Murenje Sako while from 22% in 2012, while the mobile financial services are used by 48% of our population, which was almost zero at the beginning of this uh, decade. These achievements in financial inclusion can be linked to the socio-economic developments in our country. Just as an example, uh, between 2006 and 2015, Rwandans living below the poverty line reduced from 56.7% to 39.1%, while income inequality was reduced from 0 0.52 to 0 0.44 using the Gini coefficient as a measure of inequality. Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, poverty where people still have challenges really dealing uh, consistently with financial institutions and be able to build credit history is also still uh, a problem. The, the financial illiteracy, while we've done a lot, we've achieved a lot, but there's still challenges with financial literacy, people understanding the benefits of working with financial institutions, their obligations and their rights as they work with financial institutions, that remains a challenge. Limited products on the market are designed to address the needs of the poor part of our population, and those available are still being expensive. That remains a challenge. And then limited interoperability between different uh, financial channels also still remains a, a challenge. As we, as a way of addressing the above challenges, the National Bank of Rwanda and the Minister of Finance and Economic Planning in partnership with Access to Finance Rwanda is currently working on a national financial inclusion strategy through which financial inclusion policy actions will be set with tangible assets. And in this strategy for the first time, we'll be focusing more on the quality of financial inclusion and not just the quantity. Distinguished participants and gentlemen, as I conclude, allow me to once again re-emphasize the critical role of financial inclusion that plays in fostering economic development, poverty reduction, and increasing financial stability to different families. However, as we strive to achieve financial inclusion for all, it's important to focus on building consumer confidence through financial education. Digital financial services has enormous potential to include people in the form of financial system but its success depends on understanding and trust of the consumers and continued investment from uh, different uh, stakeholders. Encouraging interoperability is a key factor in ensuring uh, greater achievements in this, in this area. So I want to end once again by thanking you for uh, being with us here today and wish you continued fruitful deliberations. I thank you.